So I thought I'd make a video, let you guys see what I'm doing here. The idea is that I'm I'm stripping these decks down and I'm going to be customising the, the full deck. I do engraving and I also mess on with opals, so there's going to be a engraving opal combo custom job uh, happening to these Technics 1200 turntables. This is a turntable that's not, well I thought hadn't been taken apart, but it actually had because I found some tools inside it. This video is uh, me stripping it down, getting it ready for polishing, removing the paint, and up to the first polish stages. There's a lot more polishing to go, so this isn't a finished example of the polishing, and there'll be another video uh, later on with uh, the engraving and the opal and all that sort of stuff. Some may like it, some may not. Some of the, Obviously the purists are going to be, uh, no, you can't do that to a Technics turntable, but um, I'm on the fence that, yeah, I can. And I'm gonna. This video is just to, to show you the strip down. It's not really intended to be a tutorial or anything like that, but if you were wanting to to copy what I've done here, it would be possible to to follow the the process and do the same. So I found that the, the lid comes in handy later on. But you want to take the lid off and all the extra bits and pieces that you can you can unscrew or pull off the decks, obviously the pitch control and the cartridge head, um, the balance weight. Obviously all these bits you, you you know come off pretty easy. It's a case of taking the this plastic cover off first so you could get at uh, the circuit boards that are underneath. So there's you're gonna need uh, tool-wise Phillips screwdriver really is the is your is, is your main uh, main thing, a few other bits and pieces, but a couple of different sizes of Phillips screwdriver, more towards the small, uh, small to medium than anything large. I did find that I was going to do it with a, an electric drill, you know, like screwing them out with that, but the bit that I had in was the wrong size. So that little bag on the right hand side there, that's a uh, first tip, get some bags and make sure that you, you, you bag up all the screws separately because all the screws are different for every different piece, the, 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 well they're not all different but there's a lot of different screws on there so when you're reassembling it it'll be easier to put back together. Uh, I've just labeled, labeled that plastic uh, plastic cover. Inside here you've got cable ties holding wires together and stuff, there's there's uh, bugs that you need to unplug off the, the main circuit body so I had to take the cable tie off and this was a really tight fitting as well obviously it's been on a long time so I had to actually like use a pair of pliers and a screwdriver to to prise it off it was really tight but you unplug one which goes to your stop start switch one which goes to your tone arm and the the target light and then the uh, pitch control the tone arm is interesting it it, it 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 has no electrical connection at all to the deck all it does is send an audio signal straight to the the amplifier so all the electronics in this extremely well built machine is uh, built to the chassis of the of the turntable so um, the, the, the top part which is a bit unusual as well but, uh, anyway just still getting these these plugs off now you could do a little bit of a job on the left hand side here if you were gonna um, depends if the, it's got a fitted plug on or not and whether you want to keep it on but if you're gonna do this and you've got a fitted plug and you want to keep it on you're gonna have to desolder the the power lead um, under the on, uh, off the circuit board on the left hand side, just kind of underneath that E uh, on the grey box. So everything uh, the, the the next stage is you, you could do more work on here, but this is just the way I did it. I would probably do this you know some, some things differently, but I think at this point I flip it over and. Um, Um, I flip it over and use the lid because otherwise if you flip this over upside down you're going to be like sitting on the tone arm so I've seen some people like use bean bags or cushions or something like that but obviously turning it upside down sitting on the lid on top of a towel so it doesn't get scratched uh, works works pretty well so now this this deck hasn't got a fitted plug um, it's, it's um, already been removed um, at some point so I, I didn't need to desolder it from the circuit board, but that would be the the the, the, the process if you if you wanted to keep your your fitted plug. Um, because you've got to put, it goes through a hole 
the cable goes through a hole in the in the chassis in the base and um, you can't get a full full plug through it and obviously if you desolder it you can pull it out the other way otherwise you wouldn't be able to get the the bits fully apart so this you take the feet off first on the on the base um, they're obviously adjustable on on rubber mounts and covered in shite uh, so these will need a need a good clean up. I don't think I'm going to be doing any customizing as such with these, although I'll maybe look at it and I'm probably going to have to do something with them because the, 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 the paint will be gone off the well not off the, off the deck, so they're not really going to be matching anyway. So definitely going to have to do something with the feet, but um, they're not a, you know in my targets at the minute. So taking this base off, there's a bunch of screws, and the base is like rubber. It's not plastic. It's 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 a rubber. Um, uh, get a, obviously for sound deadening. So the screws around the outer edge are longer than the screws around that circle, and then the screws on the inner inner part are even even smaller. So again, it's best to um, make sure that you've got your screws kept separate because they are specific lengths. For the base when you get that off um, obviously I've pulled the cables through the hole and I can get that out in, yeah so you see them coming through that hole there because I've took the plug off I was able to do that um, and there uh, yeah, there's the plug one coming through and so the next bits removing now this again to do with sound deadening I don't know what you call it but it's a big lump of heavy Bakelite type plastic it's um, literally a, a, a weight to um, reduce vibration in the in the turntable so it's it's it's, it's another form of sound deadening really um, that seems to be its only purpose it's quite surprising how long this took considering it's just a turntable you know this 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 is made so well it's it's you know fascinating taking it to bits and seeing something that's had such uh, from an engineering point of view like genius work it's it's really clever how it's it's built uh and it's no corners cut you know there's also a lot of simple science really um you know there's You've got your motor control for the turntable, but that's a tone arm coming out there. You see, there was no like connection to the actual like circuit board or anything like that. It's just the the RCA connectors that that come through. So taking the tone arm off um, is again easier to do just with it sat in the lid. You could have it with a you couldn't do that if it was sat on a as uh, as easy if it was sat on a, a, a bean bag, but it just works doing it like that. Um, well, you could do it if it was on the beanbag, but it's, it, it works doing it like that anyway. So, like I say, this isn't the be all and end all of, of how to take these things to bits, but um, I just wanted to show the full process of the, the project from start to finish. So, this is just the start bit. Like I say, it's, uh, there might be a few tips along the way, like bag up your screws. Obviously, the screws for the start stop button and your uh, 3345 button, it's, it's uh, again all need kept separate. So. Um, every part that you take off, uh, put that in a box, but put the screws in a in a bag and label that that bag up. Just having a look at the mechanism. There. It's just so simple how the, how how these things work. I mean, this is the first time I've seen inside of a uh, one of these decks first hand, and it's um, even the, the the target light here. It's just a simple little mechanism, but it's no wonder it's so reliable and consistent and um, the. Yeah, it's just no wonder that they've got such a good reputation. So pull your wires through. Um, again, it's almost agricultural. It's so so simple in its its mechanisms, and um, but you know those mechanisms are made out of metal instead of plastic, and you know it's it's it, they really are designed to last. It's no surprise at all that they're still here today. So what have we got now? Um, the the main circuit boards and the uh, central spindle for the 
of the platter to sit on the, the bearing. So the bearing there comes loose there. I've took all the screws out for the circuit board. Um, this is a heat sink and so it's, it's using, again cleverly using the body of the, 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 the turntable to lose the heat. So there's a uh, heat transfer paste in there that uh, is a little bit messy. So what I did was I, I put a little sealy bag over the part once I took it off just so it didn't get sticky everywhere. Um, and I'm taking off the, uh, the next bits to take the plate off for the cable coming through the, the body. And it was finding out that the body's made out of aluminium. This, uh, this top is made out of aluminium that set all this off really because that's what I normally engrave, and I normally engrave uh, aluminium tattoo machines, the killer bee tattoo machines that I've been making for several years now. And the um, so, so they're aluminium, and that's what I'm used to engraving. So when I found out that the the top of a deck was Technics 1200 was aluminium, I thought that well, wouldn't it be cool if I could uh, en engrave one. So uh, we're now doing it. So um, all the uh, motherboard and power boards screws are now out just need to take off the screws around the uh, transformer which is in that black thing you know, grey looking uh, box um, I think I've got screws stuck in it you know, I couldn't get it out so I just left it left it wedged in and all that comes out together you don't like separate these at all you don't cut any wires or anything like that um, it's all uh, it, connected by, by by wires so it'll all be floppy but you'll end up with three sections you'll have the transformer that's uh, a screw that I couldn't get out you'll have the transformer, the power board and the the, the, the main motherboard so again all the screws for the transformer and the power board and what, what, what not you put them into bags and keeping it separate that's me just putting the bag on there um, I don't know what that is actually, I can't remember what they're called. But anyway, um, it's for the for the white paste. There's all the parts now in a box, what would fit in the box. A couple of little bits. Now this is plastic, so be careful with this, the forks on that just clipping. And the pitch adjustment indicator, the, the little grid on the, on the side. Wow, this is uh, not wanting to come off. And you, if you take this off, you're going to be replacing it because... You, you'll wreck it. It's made of really thin aluminium and it just it's not designed to be took off really but I'll be replacing that and making new ones. So paint stripper isn't what it used to be. Um, I'd have put this on, you know, five years ago I'd have put this on and it would have wrinkled up and all the paint would have fell off but actually I had to do about three or four coats of it. Uh, it was a mission and then uh, there was still bits left on so this is me now sanding it, sanding it back, sanding the last bits off so I started with um, 180 grit and then I went on to 400 grit now this is the wet sand and this is the start of the polishing really so like I start with 600 grit and then you work your way up through 800 grit 1000 grit 1200 1500 and 2000 grit and then onto the polisher and um, now like I said I'm only just giving these a, a, an early polish to get us started with where I, where I need to be but there'll be a lot more polishing work that's, that's done on these but they're already you, you know you'll see you'll see in a minute how they, they, they come up so um, we're a few hours into this now obviously it's time lapse and stuff so quite a bit of you know you don't want to sit and watch me sanding for hours and hours you know so so you can kind of see where we're at with the polish at the minute. Like I say, there's still uh, a lot of polish and work to do, but it's enough to get us started on the onto the next stage. You can already see they're looking pretty amazing, to be honest with you, and can't wait to start start engraving them. So this one is is pretty much ready to start engraving. So keep tuned in for uh, any the next progress video. The next one will be engraving. I'll be uh, drawing the patterns on by hand and with a with a sharpie marker pen and then engraving it so that'll be the next stage and then we'll go on to the platter which is going to dots around the edge everybody again's like oh no you can't remove the dots i'm removing the dots and in there we're going to we're going to create a channel around that edge and i'm going to inlay opal 
into the into the edge of the platter it's going to look absolutely amazing so with the combination of the opal and the engraving these decks are going to be something else they will be for sale once once they're finished so you know it's uh, if anybody out there uh, sees what's happening here and wants to put their name on them then uh, feel free to contact us and uh, uh, you'll be able to do that they will be for sale um, so yeah keep an eye on the progress it should it should be quite interesting and um, the finished product should be pretty amazing so thanks for watching and we'll see you next time